kick us off, we have Mr. Clay Collard here. If you want to go ahead and ask the first question. And then up next will be Mr. Jay Anderson. Tom, it's all you. Hi, Clay. Tom Ward from Give Me Sport here. Um, just a quick question. How are you finding life in the bubble? Uh, man, it's easy. Everything's laid out for you. Everything's taken care of. So, um, yeah, it's easy for me, man. I'm just, I'm just ready to chomping at the bit to get in the cage, man. And my final question is, have you bumped into uh, Pettis yet? Yeah, I mean, we've ran into each other in the hall. He's, he's walking around here like he owns the place. But what can you do? All right. Up next is Jay Anderson. Hey, Clay. Thanks very much for the time today. And uh, welcome back. I know it's been a while, obviously, lost 2020 due to the pandemic. And then you come back and you get the news that you're going to be fighting Anthony Pettis, which is a, a huge opportunity in terms of eyeballs and the intention on, on this fight. Just... Uh, give us an idea of your immediate reaction to this matchup. Um, I, I was actually very excited. Um, I was telling all the all the people I'm in touch with PFL that I wanted him or or the champ Nathan first. So, um, I mean, I, I like I like fighting the tough guys. If you don't know that yet, so. All right. Up next, we have Harry Mack. Hey, Clay. Harry Mack from the Bookie's Basement here. Hope all is well. So uh, you're a four to one betting underdog in your PFL debut against Anthony Pettis coming up this week. So uh, is that something that affects your mindset going into a fight at all? Um, man, if you know anything about me, you know, I like being the underdog. Um, go ahead and count me out. Uh, I love proving you, proving everybody wrong. So. Awesome. Up next. We have uh, Simon Romero. Hey, Clay. Simon Romero behind the grind. Uh, your boxing experience in uh, top rank was something um, that was big in your career. So how much better do you feel that uh, that played dividends in your MMA career specifically? Um, I mean, honestly, I feel like that year of boxing did nothing but better my all-around fight game. Um I never stopped training mixed martial arts. I just got some some different looks and and I fought people with hands like boxers. So um, yeah, I think it it helped me out tremendously boxing for that year. All right, up next, Justin David Kish. Justin, you out there? You might be muted, buddy. All right, we will come back to you. Um, how about uh, Will Getling? Hey, Clay, this is Will from the Fight Gods podcast. I was wondering, you know, speaking on your boxing career, will you continue boxing or are you going to start getting back just into uh, MMA at the moment? Um, right now I'm focus on pfl and i'm focused on winning this belt so um i i would like to win it multiple years in a row um so right right now the focus is on mixed martial arts um we'll see what the future holds though so all right up next darnell Hi, Clay Darnell Giovanni with MMA Island. You fought Max Holloway in the past. Do you think you'd want to have that rematch sometime in the future? Uh, I, I don't want to have to make the cut to 45 again, but if he wants to meet me at 55, or I might be able to make 50. <laughs> no, I, uh, I want to, I've wanted that rematch for a while. I would love to fight him again. Um, you know, I t I'm not even the same person as back then, so... Um, I, th I think it would be a great fight, very entertaining fight. So who wouldn't want that? All right. Up next, let's go ahead with Danny. Hey, Clay. Um, a, a lot of people are considering Pet as the favorite to win uh, the whole tournament. So I, I was just wondering, um, first, what are your thoughts on Pet as uh, joining uh, PFL and, and being in your division? And second, do you think it's fair that that he's being considered the favorite to win the whole thing. 
Uh, man, he's got to get past me first. So, <laughs> um, yeah, he's got to get past me. He's got to get past the champ. I mean, there's a lot of really good talent here in the PFL and, and the fact that, that he's coming over and, and thinking he's going to just, you know, everybody thinks he's just going to steal the show. I just, I don't see it, but, uh, yeah, you know, he is very talented and he is very tough. So, um, you know, he, yeah, he's got to get past me first. Yeah, for sure. And um, you mentioned like he's walking around like he feels like he owns the place. Can you expand on that a little bit and your interactions that you've had so yeah, far? Yeah, just like people, people wanting to take pictures with him and he's just, I don't know, if you know, if you, the, the guy just gives off that, like, he gives that off, you know? So that that's just what I see, so. Yeah. D does it annoy you? Does it bother you at all? Man, not, not a whole lot bothers me. <laughs> I'm just re I'm just ready to fight, man. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and ask the question for uh, Justin David Kish. Um, what do you know about Anthony Pettis, and what are your preparations going into this fight? I I mean, what do I know about Anthony Pettis? I've been watching him since I was, you know, in my early teens, so I know a lot about Anthony. Um, as far as fighting him goes, uh, I just got to fight my fight. You know, I, I, I'm trusting my coaches. We have a game plan and, and I'm going to stick to it and it's going to work. Awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> Mike Owens from Mike Owens Media. Hello, Clay. This is Michael from Mike Owens Media. What is the single biggest advantage your recent run in boxing has given you in anticipation for this tournament? Right here, man. The hands. <laughs> uh, I, I believe boxers have the best hands around as far as when it comes to fighting. You know, there's kickboxing, Muay Thai, there's all this, but boxing, I think boxing rules on the feet. And and so uh, I think my it, boxing is my advantage. Thank you. Um, up next, Alex from Cage Side Press. Hi, Clay. Um, I just got a quick, quick question for you. Um, how does it feel to be the main event on, on ESPN? Uh, well deserved. Um, I've been working hard and I've been working at this for, for many, many years. So it feels well deserved. Thank you. Up next, Simon Romero. Simon, you out there? All right, let's go with um, let's go with Andrew Benjamin. Oh, uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Hey, Clay, I have a question. Uh, you're talking about the boxing uh, portion uh, of MMA, but I'm curious to know, uh, as we know that Anthony Pettis is maybe one of the best grapplers in his weight division. I'm curious to know, have you uh, worked on grappling defense or, or the ground game by any chance uh, with this upcoming fight? <laughs> well, obviously, yes. <laughs> um, this is a mixed martial arts fight, and I am a mixed martial artist. So I've been working my ground game with black belts and, and sambo, and I've been working wrestling. And so, yes, the answer is yes. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Up next, Bobby Whitney. Hey, what's going on? It's uh, Bobby Whitney from Last Out Media. I noticed you were on a hot streak. Yeah, won your last two fights. But, of course, there's been some delay, and now you're in the bubble. Has that changed your training or your momentum in any way as far as how you plan to go into this fight with such a layoff? Um, man, I'm, I feel like, I feel like I've been waiting for this. Well, I have been waiting for PFL for two years now. Um, I've been training for PFL for two years now. So, um, as far as my momentum, I'm, I'm like a locomotive. So. <laughs> All right. I have a question from Matthew from last out media. 
Clay, do you feel pressure to use wrestling or grappling early to reestablish yourself in an MMA fight? Uh, n- no. Um, I'm going to go out there and fight my fight. It, if it goes there, I'm prepared. Um, but, I mean, as far as everybody knows what I like to do, and that's punch people in the face. So I'm trying to punch punch Anthony in the face. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Thomas Friedman. Good afternoon, Clay. I'm Thomas Friedman from 3300 and Climbing and straying away from the fight real quick. I just wanna know if you have a favorite playlist that you like to listen to when you're training and how it affects the way that you train. Um, I mean, I just hit my like songs on Spotify. So um, it mixes from you know, heavy rap to Tina Turner. So, uh, yeah, I just, I just throw on and I, I get down to whatever, man. It doesn't really, as long as I have a little something in the background, that's all I'm looking for. So right on. Thank you very much. Next is, uh, Alder. Hi, Clay. This is Alder from Empire Sports Media in New York. I just would like to ask, uh, what attracted you to the PFL? And the second question would be, are we going to expect a knock, knockout with your boxing uh, background? Um, I wouldn't blink because very, very easily, you know, we, <laughs> we could be seeing knockouts. So um, as far as being attracted to the PFL, I love the tournament style and obviously, you know, the winning prize. So, um yeah, I, I like the fact that you if you fight and you win, you you get to move on. Um, there, there's not a whole lot of politics behind it. So. Ryan Shepard. Hey, Clay, it's Ryan from Def Pen Media in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I saw that you're, you're wearing the King Chad shirt in honor of your brother. I just wanted to ask you, like, what kind of inspiration does your family give you heading into this fight? Uh, my fam, I mean, me and my brothers were everything to each other. So um, I, I think I've talked on the phone with my older brother every single day since I've been here, <laughs> you know, so um, they're they're the whole reason I do this. You know, I, I fight for my family and I fight for my fans and that's about it. So. Up next, Global Fight Talk. You hear me? Gotcha now. All right. Hi, Clay. This is Sab from Global Fight Talk. How you doing? Could you repeat? Sorry. I said, this is Sab from Global Fight Talk. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Great, great. Uh, you obviously have a, a wealth of combat sport, uh, sports experience. Uh, you said in a recent interview that you don't really consider yourself a boxer boxer. You just have that tool in there. Um, how do you How do you feel like you're going to approach this fight as an MMA fight instead of boxing? How much better is it to go in with all your tools? Um, like I said before, I'm chomping at the bit to get in the cage, man. Um, boxing was fun, but uh, yeah, I think I'm a much better fighter and, and I'm a lot more creative, you know, when I can throw more than just my hands. So um i am very excited to get in the cage again and away from the ring all right thank you all right um sean sheehan okay hi i just want to ask you obviously there's been a lot of of boxing questions here but i want to just ask about a a small technical adjustment maybe that you had to make going from mma to boxing and now going from boxing back to mma is there anything you can tell us a small maybe technical thing that you had to change uh, it's just my mindset, man, and the way the way I move my angles. Um, the angles are a little bit different, but um, yeah, it's just just my mindset. You know, I'm I'm ready to go in there as a mixed martial artist, and that's you know I've been working at this. Like I said, I've been working working at being a mixed martial artist since I was you know started this at 18 years old. So. All right. I have another question from Justin Kish. I will read to you. 
During your training camp, did you introduce anything new in this camp in preparation for the Pettis fight, or was it more, or was it a normal camp? Um, yeah, no, it was pretty normal. We prepared for everything, you know. Um, but I did a little more swimming than usual. Um, jumped in the pool a little more. Um, I, I'm, I upped everything to the next level, you know. So. <laughs> Uh, I, I trained harder than I've ever trained before getting ready for this. So um, I'm definitely ready to rock and I, I'm definitely well prepared. So, um, Okay. Up next we have Curtis. Hey Clay. Um, just a question, man. So do you think this is like a coming out party for you? You know, everybody, is expecting, or most people are expecting, you know, Anthony Pettis to win the, uh, the series this year. But do you think that if you can go and get past him being the first fight in the main event on ESPN, that this is like your coming out party, that you're here to show who you are? 110%. That's, that's how I'm looking at it, man. It's time for me to come out and do my thing and shock the world and let everybody know what's up. Cash yes, plays in the building, baby. Thank you, sir. Up next, we have Shantae. Hello, Clay. How are you? Um, my question is, I'm with 3300 and climbing, by the way. And my question is, I know you don't have a specific, well, specific music that you listen to to get ready for a fight, but how do you choose the song that you um, walk out to? And what effect does that have on you when you get in the ring? Uh, we don't get to pick our walkout song for this this one, which is kind of a bummer. Um, I was going to walk out to a song that reminded me of my little brother. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there there could be a thousand different reasons I pick a song. It's just whatever I'm feeling at the moment. So, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's go ahead with Tanae. Hi, Clay. This is Tanai Shah from MMA Island. I would like to know if you have a Cassius Clay prediction, like a Mystic Mac prediction, if you have your own. Well, I thought it was five rounds. It's only three rounds. So, I mean, I like to put them away end of the third. But, awesome. You know. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. And then up next, Daniel. Hi, Clay. This is this is Breeze with the MMA Breeze. I uh, wanted to ask you, you know, Anthony Pettis is the, the most followed guy in your bracket as far as stardom goes and Instagram following and that stuff. So with with, uh, with your career, you've been around a long time as well and faced a lot of worthy opponents in the UFC. Pettis, it, it, it has that asset that's valued a lot today in MMA, which is the stardom. How important is it to you to not just win this fight to move on in the bracket, but to have the ESPN main event slot and hopefully steal some of that following and star power going into the rest of this bracket. Um, you know, it's very exciting. I've never really been huge on social media. I just kind of post what I post and do my thing, you know, but I, I love fans. I would, I, I love fighting for the fans. It's a big bummer. They're not here to enjoy this, but, um, yeah, you know, I want to I'm 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 trying to be the next big